What the? Whoa, what happened? What happened? Bro, my weight's not going down anymore. I don't know why. So I've literally been plateaued. I mean, are, are you tracking it consistently? Yes, I'm tracking consistently. You think I'm dumb? All right, relax. What are you eating, though? I don't know. Well, right now I'm doing a seafood diet. So, I mean, I thought that works. I thought I was supposed to lose weight, you know, but... It's not going down. No, no, it makes sense because you look like you just see food and you eat it. You fat. Yeah, that's pretty funny, bro. That's pretty. Oh. All right, guys, this is the video. This is the long awaited advanced fat loss guide. I'm going to be taking tips straight out of my ebook that you have to pay for the ultimate guide to fat loss. But I want to share this advice with you guys so I can help you go from moderately lean to extremely shredded. These tips that I'm going to put in this video are going to be what I use to go from around the 15 to 18% body fat range all the way down to 10% and even lower. This stuff will get you extremely shredded. There is a prerequisite though. You do need to know how to count calories before watching this video. And the reason is, is because the leaner you want to be, the more specific you need to get. And what's more specific than going down to individual numbers. So if you don't know how to count calories, go watch one of my previous videos. It's called the most important important skill for fat loss. I literally break down in simple steps how to learn how to count your calories. Well, if you already know how, stay tuned. Watch this video to the end. You don't want to miss any of these tips. They're very important. They're going to help you get extremely shredded. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's see how we're going to get extremely lean to the point where it looks like our skin is literally painted on our muscles. Tip number one is going to be your mindset and consistency. Now, why do we have to go over this? Because the leaner you get, the longer it's going to take. You might see abrupt fat loss in the beginning, especially if you're starting from a more overweight point. But once you start getting leaner and leaner below 20% below 18% once you're 15% from there to get to like 8% body fat takes a long time you have to be very very strict very specific and you got to understand it's probably going to take longer than you think and you probably have to lose more weight than you think as well you are also going to have setbacks because the leaner you get the more temptation you're going to have the more cravings you're going to have the more likely you are to cheat and that's fine you probably will mess up during this point and it's okay the reason we're going over mindset is so you can expect these things to occur so that these setbacks don't completely stop you on your journey and you can still eventually make it over the long period of time to get shredded. So just expect it's going to take longer than you think. You probably have more weight to lose than you think. It's going to be a long process. You're going to be really tempted. You need to stay strong and you need to make sure you're consistent. Now let's get into tip two, which is going to be the calorie deficit. And I'm going to show you exactly the best way to structure your calories to ensure that you get really lean without extremely plateauing and slowing your metabolism down and just being in this extreme hunger state where you're not losing weight, but you're starving all the time. This is from my ultimate guide to fat loss. I got the inspiration of it from Omar Esau, who runs a company called Rascal, and he's another really big fitness YouTuber. He's one of the goats. He's been around for a long time. This is pretty much the three one dieting structure, where basically you're in a deficit for three weeks out of a month, and the fourth week is a maintenance week. Basically, you want to rinse and repeat this tactic because what they found through research was that the people that adopt this routine lost the same amount of fat as people that were in a constant deficit. And so, if that's the case, that means you can literally eat more food and lose the same amount of weight still. So, why would you want to suffer the entire? time and put yourself in a deficit and not have any refeed days. The point of the 3-1 structure is every seventh day you get a refeed. The increase in carbohydrates helps reset your metabolism and fire you back up. And then that one week period at the end of the month where you go back to maintenance keeps your body guessing. It literally keeps it on its toes. So it never fully adapts to the calories you're giving it. It's like throwing more coal into a locomotive engine. Eventually the engine's going to start working harder and the train's going to start moving faster. So you're in a deficit for three weeks. Every seventh day is a refeed. And then the fourth week is a maintenance week. I literally did this myself and I got the 10% body fat. A couple of tips for this is to eat according to your activity levels. So you don't want to be in a constant deficit every single day, which a lot of people do. One thing you can do, if you don't want to do the three, one dieting structure, and you don't want to have the same amount of calories every single day, you can eat according to your activity levels to where if one day, let's say you didn't move at all. You sat on the computer and recorded YouTube videos like I'm doing. Maybe you only eat 1800 calories that day because you didn't do anything. Let's say the next day you walked a few miles. You can still be in a deficit if you eat like, let's say 2200. So you eat according to the amount of activity you do. That's the best way to do it. Now you want to make sure that you get a gram of protein per pound of body weight, especially during this time. The leaner you get, the more important it is to have your higher protein, especially because one cool thing about protein is that it has a higher TEF, aka thermogenic effect of food. Why is that important? Pretty much that's the amount of calories your body is required to burn the food at a 
of protein, carbs, and fats. It's literally the macronutrient that requires the most heat to digest, the most calories burned to digest. So basically by eating more protein, you're literally speeding up your metabolism a little bit. You're forcing your body to work harder to burn the food, to digest it. So the higher your protein, the better off you're gonna be in the long run. So you wanna make sure, honestly, 0.8 grams per pound of body weight to one gram per pound of body weight. I stick to one, it's a lot easier. You don't have to do a lot of math, especially the leaner you get, you're not gonna wanna do calculations, trust me. You're gonna be brain dead half the freaking time, waking up, not even knowing what day of the week it is, looking at the scale and celebrating because you're 0.2 pounds less than the day before. So make sure your protein's high, follow the three-one structure, rinse and repeat this until you get to your desired body fat level. The third tip is gonna be cardio. Now, you guys are probably gonna expect me to say, ah, oh, you're gonna be out running eight miles a day. You got a David Goggins that shit, right? All them f***ing pastries must be f***ing what you're hearing. No, no, you don't. Actually, the leaner you get, it's actually better to do less intense cardio, and I'll tell you why. Because one, your recovery is gonna be a lot less. Your joints will probably start hurting a little more. You probably won't be able to lift as heavy. It's fine. It's normal. Your lifts will go down in the gym. Very normal things, but your recovery is less because you're not supplying your body with enough nutrients to repair itself as much as, you know, if you were at maintenance or on a bulk. So your best friend is going to be L-I-S-S, -S, low intensity, steady state cardio. God bless America. You don't need to do high intensity interval training. You could do it one to two times per week. For me personally, it was boxing. I like to hit the bag for cardio, but even when I was getting leaner, as much as I wanted to do it on a daily basis, it wasn't a good idea because it would leave me wrecked. I would be way too sore to do anything else. My central nervous system is fried. I go home and take a nap for two hours. I don't do anything else throughout the whole day, you know? Low intensity, steady state. What's an example of that? Walking is literally the best option. Walk on a freaking incline, walk on a treadmill. I got to a point where I was walking around 45 minutes a day on a treadmill and that was my only cardio and I was shedding fat like crazy. Everything I did throughout the day was very low intensity. You know, I wasn't working out extremely hard. I was doing just enough volume to maintain muscle. I was eating enough protein. I was just walking and I was melting the fat off my body. So L-I-S-S, -S, Liss is gonna be your best friend, all right? Shout out to the homegirl Liss. Another thing that sucks about HIT is the more often you do this high intensity cardio, the hungrier it's gonna make you as well. So if you're always doing explosive workouts and stuff like that, but you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna be way more likely to cheat on your diet. You're gonna have extreme amounts of hunger. It's gonna be 9 p.m. and you're gonna look in your pantry. You're gonna see your little brother's box of fruity pebbles and you're gonna say, damn it, little Jimmy. And then next thing you know, he's waking up the next day saying, hey, what happened to my cereal? I bought a new box. And you're like, dude, I'm sorry. I inhaled it. It's gone. Cereal's done. So in order to prevent massive amounts of hunger, do yourself a favor and don't do massive amounts of cardio. Low intensity stuff, burns a lot of calories, keeps the hunger at bay, keeps the doctor away. Tip number four is sleep. You know why this is important, especially the leaner you get? I'll tell you why. I'll give you a couple of reasons why. When I was cutting, I got to a point where I plateaued and I didn't know what it was. And I realized it's because I was grinding. I was studying for certain things. I was sleeping like five to six hours a night. And then I remembered I watched a video on it might have been Jeff Nippard they were talking about oh yeah you need to sleep more to burn more calories etc etc it lowers cortisol so I literally slept more and I smashed through my plateau the next day I woke up 0.4 pounds less because I had eight hours of sleep that night when you sleep less your body has more cortisol which is a stress hormone having more of that makes you hold on to more fat it's literally scientifically proven all right don't argue with me on this. I'm a guy in a mask. I'm literally not a doctor. I know what I'm talking about. You have more stress, you're going to hold on to more fat, okay? So sleeping more, I'm talking seven to nine hours of sleep a night will make it so your body's chill and it can burn more calories in its sleep and you're going to, you know, minimize the amount of plateaus you have to face. So you want to sleep more, you can burn more calories and you can reduce the amount of stress hormone that your body releases. Don't let your sleep be the reason that you're not getting shredded. Grinding in your sleep is literally not a meme, bro. You're literally getting shredded in your sleep by sleeping more. So do it. All right, tip five is gonna be maintenance phases. This is very important, especially when you've been dieting for a long ass period of time. Let's say you're super overweight, you diet for like six months. You know, eventually it gets to a point where you're getting burnt out, you're getting fatigued. Cut the time you dieted in half and go on a maintenance phase for that amount of time, which is basically you raise your calories by like four, five, 600 back to maintenance and you eat at that amount for that period of time. So if you diet for six months, top it there, go into a maintenance phase for three months. People hate hearing this because they wanna get shredded in one go. That's not gonna happen. If you wanna lose 40, 50, 60 pounds, that shouldn't be done in one go. It's going to be really hard, really unhealthy. And honestly, you're better off doing it in two or three phases. You lose a little bit of amount of fat and then you cruise on maintenance. And then you lose some more amount of fat for the next time around and then you cruise on maintenance. You don't want to just get shredded one time around and then gain all the weight back. If you try to straight shot it, this is what happens to people. I'm sure everyone knows somebody that literally got, you know, a craft and a weight loss and you see them like, wow, you look great. And then you see them six months later and it's almost like they reverted, unfortunately, back to their old body type. It's because it makes it really hard to stay there, especially when you adopt crazy dieting habits and structures and stuff like that that are not sustainable.
the long term, you gain all the way back. So maintenance phases are important for the long run because you don't want to get shredded once. You want to get shredded and stay there. Maybe you want to maintain 10% body fat year round. You can do it if the habits you do to get there are sustainable in the long period of time. So take some maintenance phases. You now I was cutting for around four months. I did a month. Granted, I didn't take my own advice. I should have done two, but I did a month of maintenance and it helps a lot. And you think, oh, but what if I put on all this fat and I'm going to gain back all the way? And you, you will. It's going to mess with your head. I gained seven pounds in my maintenance month. And I swear to God, I can't explain it. The first week back onto my diet, within two days, the seven pounds came off. Once I went back into a deficit, I wasn't even hungry. The seven pounds came off in like two or three days. All the weight I gained, so-called weight that I gained was probably just water and glycogen. Okay. All I did was reset my metabolism, fix my hormones, make me feel more healthy again. Get ready for phase two. We're going back on the diet. You know, it should be done in phases. You don't want to try and straight shot anything. It's going to screw you over in the long term. And you're going to keep doing this repeated cycle of, oh, you try to diet, you lose some weight and then you gain it back. You say, screw it. It's, you don't need to be so extreme. There's gray area for a reason. Okay. This is how you're going to get shredded in the long term and stay that way. So don't force it. You got to take these maintenance phases, increase your calories up to maintenance for two, three, four, five, six weeks, maybe even a couple months. If you've been dieting for a long time, it'll help you a lot. Trust me on that. Tip six is going to be intermittent fasting. Do you need to do this? Nope. You don't need to. And if you don't want to literally skip to tip seven, but if you're interested, intermittent fasting makes it so it's a little bit easier to eat less calories throughout the day. So let's say your calories are, let's say they're super low, 1600 calories, right? You're at that last stretch and you're like trying to go from 12% to like 9%, you're just getting so lean, but you're just feeling really hungry. Instead of eating four 400 calorie meals throughout the day, let's say you can't do that because they're not satiating. Maybe you want to eat two huge 800 calorie meals throughout the day, or you want to have a 1000 calorie meal and then a 400 calorie meal. You fast all day. You don't think about food get your work done. Maybe you drink some black coffee, you blunt your appetite, some sparkling, sparkling water. water. We're not afraid of bubbles on this channel. And you drink that, it blunts your appetite. And then once it gets to like four or 5 PM around there, you break your fast. You have a massive feast. A lot of people like to do this. I also do did it at the end of my cut. It did help me at the time kind of manage, you know, my hunger and stuff. But the only reason it backfired, the reversal of this law made me crave more things. Since I wasn't eating throughout the day and my body was used to eating massive meals, even when I would eat, let's say 1600 calories in one sitting, my stomach turned into a black hole, a planetary void where it was just sucking in everything around it. I just wanted more. Not even a Krabby Patty with a secret ingredient of love made by SpongeBob SquarePants himself would have made me full in that moment. There's no chance. So that's the only reason I didn't like fasting, but it does work for some people try it out for yourself a lot of people love to do intermittent fasting i personally don't do intermittent fasting anymore but it did help me when i needed it try it for yourself it could be beneficial tip seven we're going to talk about some bonuses here first one's going to be water intake what you're going to notice is you know you'll probably start to feel more hungry throughout the day while you're getting leaner but that's a lie that's literally your body scamming you your brain is literally clickbaiting you you're actually not hungry your body can't tell the difference between hunger and thirst at those points if you go and chug water go to literally chug a bottle of water i have one back here 16.9 fluid ounces of agua you're you're gonna be like, wow, I'm actually not hungry anymore. Five minutes later, it's gonna go away. That is how you know you're not truly hungry. True hunger is when a bland chicken breast sounds like the best thing you could eat right now. If you're not craving chicken breast, you're not starving, okay? You're not hungry. When you get to that lean ass point where you're gonna be below 10%, hunger is inevitable. You're gonna feel that way. Everyone feels that way. Instead of saying, oh, I'm hungry, I'm starving, you should rewire your brain to say, this is what fat loss feels like and differentiate if you're hungry or not, drink more water. A hack that I used to do was I would drink 16 ounces of water before I ate and then 16 ounces after. So every meal I'd have 32 ounces of water and I was having four meals throughout the day. So I was clearing a gallon a day easy. It's good for your skin. It literally recycles everything in your body. You know, being hydrated is great, especially in the summer too. You know, I was the only one not getting headaches from the heat and stuff. And uh, when I would do cardio, I'd barely need to sip water. So not only does it keep you full, it's just really beneficial in general. Drink more water. It's going to help you, especially the leaner you get. Now, weightlifting, I didn't cover that that much in this video because if you're advanced enough to understand this level of fat loss, I assume you already have a good routine. If you don't, you want to make sure you're still lifting weights throughout this whole cut. You need to be lifting weights is very important. You minimize muscle loss. The leaner you get, especially as a natty bro, as a natty bro, as a natural lifter, you don't take PEDs, you don't use gear, then it's inevitable. You're probably going to lose some mass, some size, some strength, and that's fine, but just minimize it by sticking to a good routine. You shouldn't switch to doing 30 rep sets with light ass weight. You'll probably end up having to do less sets because your recovery will be less, or maybe your muscle frequency will be a little bit less, but you should still train. Every time you go in the gym, you should still have an intense weightlifting session. Don't make your sessions less intense. Okay, still have at least one to two really hard working sets per exercise, you know, where you're trying to really force the muscle to exert itself. That's going to ensure that you don't lose muscle. And when I was getting to my leanest point, I was doing full body routine three times a week. The one that I have on my Gumroad, check it out. It's free to download. Schemasduets.gumroad.com. It's going to be in the description. 
okay check it down there you could also follow push pull legs you could also follow upper lower rest the point is you still go to the gym to lift weights consistently while you're walking while you're drinking more water while you're counting your calories there is no magic formula there is no magic pill i can inject trend in my body and i still wouldn't get me shredded that easily you have to have the habits and the discipline it is this difficult sorry that that's a black pill that you have to swallow but if you look at it positively it's a white pill it means you're building the habits necessary to become the best version of yourself damn it drop the mic Pfft, explosions come on where's the confetti the next bonus is going to be try to avoid stress as much as possible in your life once you're getting as lean as you can go i know this is like easier said than done trust me you know if you notice conflict here or like there's certain things stressing you out take your mind off it play some freaking computer chess watch some anime like i don't know just do things that you know make you relax go hit the sauna go sit in a jacuzzi the less stress you have the better because your body will not be forced to hold on to those excess amount of fat and it'll be more likely to shed the fat and you know you'll have a much smoother process overall you don't be you know trying to worry about bills and the kids and this and that and my job's gonna fire me any way you can find for stress relief that doesn't affect your diet or training do that you know just as hard as we train our recovery and our rest should also be as hard like you should focus that intensely on recovering and giving your brain a break and you know relaxing you know whatever you need to do if you need to go freaking pipe your wife five times be my guest bro that is great stress relief make sure you manage stress another one bonus is avoid processed foods okay the more you eat processed foods the less full they make you they're not satiating and nor are they healthy for you towards the end of my cut my calories were literally comprised of of cardboard foods like chicken vegetables canned tuna saltine crackers like cauliflower rice not even actual rice occasional bread with a super low calorie bread egg whites like stuff like that and you might think that sounds miserable but no when you're that lean everything tastes good to you you know capitalize on that by eating the boring foods because those are lower calorie but higher volume there's a large amount of food to fill your stomach but they're not as high in calories for example a cup of cauliflower rice was like under 100 calories but a cup of white rice is like 200 it's the same volume of food significantly less calories so if i want to have 200 calories of cauliflower rice it's literally this mountain on my plate as opposed to this tiny portion of white rice eat the stuff that's healthy for you because you can have larger portions and make you feel more satiated and it's healthier for you and it's not going to be this processed garbage that you're going to overeat anyways it's going to spike your dopamine and make you not satisfied to everything else in the world anyways so yeah avoid processed foods try to find low calorie high volume foods okay that's going to benefit you a lot another bonus supplements you don't need supplements you don't need to take jack anything none of that nonsense you can do this without it, but they will help you a lot, especially once you drop below like 13, 12%. Caffeine, really good one. Coffee will suppress your appetite. You're not going to want to eat. Should you be drinking a gallon of coffee a day? No, you're going to burn out your freaking adrenal glands and your body's going to hate you. You're going to be pissing orange. Okay. But use caffeine as a tool to blunt your appetite when you're really hungry or have like a tea or something. Fat burners. A lot of people ask me about fat burners. So the reason fat burners work is pretty much they cause like thermogenesis in your body, which makes you extremely hot. It means when you go do cardio, you're going to sweat more. You're going to burn more calories. Your body is temperature is just like a little bit elevated. So I would take Raul sign by Gorilla Mind, go walk on the treadmill and I'll sweat like twice as much as I normally would if I didn't take it. They're just the icing on the cake, but the actual cake is the habits. So if you don't have the habits, there's no icing on the cake. It's you're just literally just eating icing and the kids that did that are God knows where they are now. You know, you need the cake and the icing. Okay. But cake without icing is still good. You get what I'm saying? So anyways, enough cake and allergies. Those are good supplements. Creatine is the best natural supplement you can take. It'll help you prevent muscle loss and stuff. It's really good to take on a cut. A lot of natty swear by it not just when you're bulking if you take it on a cut too it'll stop you from looking super shriveled up when you get really lean you can take protein powder i would avoid drinking any calories though on a cut because it's not going to make you feel full you should eat most of your calories if not all of them that's the best way to not feel like you're starving the leaner you get to recap we'll go over all the tips again really fast number one the mindset and the consistency it's going to take longer than you think you probably have more weight to lose than you think expect setbacks so that you're not surprised when they happen and you can overcome them okay two calorie deficit follow the three one dieting structure seven days is a maintenance day the fourth week is a maintenance week rinse and repeat it'll carry you really far and help you get shredded eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight keep your protein high because it has a higher tef thermogenic effect of food which will benefit you in the long run three is cardio avoid high intensity interval training but shout out to the home girl list because liss is going to get you shredded af lower intensity means less hunger still a large amount of calories burned but overall more sustainable long-term fat loss four sleep sleep will allow you to burn more calories you won't hold on to as much fat because you'll have less stress hormone aka less cortisol you want to sleep seven to nine hours a night try and make it happen please don't be the person that sleeps four hours a night and takes a two-hour nap in the middle of the day for the love of god make room in your day to sleep seven to eight hours nine even better the leaner you get it'll benefit you a lot five maintenance phases if you've been dieting for a long ass time whatever time you dieted for cut it in half do a maintenance phase for that period of time gives your body a break allows your hormones to reset makes you feel less miserable and it makes what you're doing more sustainable in the long term so you don't gain all the way back after you're done dieting six intermittent fasting do you need to do 
it? No, but it helps if your calories are extremely low. I did it towards the end of my cut. It makes eating small calories throughout the day a lot easier. And seven, the bonuses, water intake, drink 16 ounces of water before and after eating. Easy life hack, okay? More water. Weightlifting, lift weights just as intensely. Your recovery might be a little bit skewed, so maybe lower the amount of volume you're doing, but don't lower the intensity. You should still be going ham every time you touch those weights. Every time you touch that barbell and get underneath it, you should still be going hard. Don't max out though while you're cutting because you're more prone to injury, but just keep the sets intense. Reduce stress, okay? Whatever way you need to do, if you need to go watch a movie, you need to go play the new Hogwarts video game, you need to go clap your wife's cheeks, whatever you need to do, bro. Try to find a way to reduce stress because working out intense requires recovering intensely as well. Avoid processed food. Look for low calorie options so that you can have higher amounts of them so that they will make you feel more full. Supplements. Caffeine is a good one. Express your appetite. Creatine is a really good natural supplement as well. I wouldn't use protein powder because you don't want to drink your calories, especially when you're cutting, when you're in a deficit. It's going to make it way harder. Fat burners help you burn fat if you already know how to burn fat. They're not going to make you burn fat on your own if you're eating like crap. So don't have to take them. It's up to you. With that being said, guys, this was a long ass video. I feel like I still might have missed a couple of points, but you know, if there's any questions you have, it'll probably get answered by getting my fat loss ebook. I swear by this because I literally put all the knowledge I have of losing fat into this one ebook. It's going to be in the description. Go check it out for yourself if you want to purchase it. It does support me directly so I can keep bringing fire advice to you guys on this channel because I want all my followers to make me look like a noob in the gym. I want the people that listen to me to look better than me. Everyone, if you're watching this channel right now and you watch to the end, you automatically gain plus 10 strength. I want all my followers to get jacked and shredded. That means creating the best version of yourself to give to the world. That's what we're going to do here on the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. You're not losing anything, but you're allowing me to gain something. And I'm going to delete my channel by the end of the year if I don't hit a million subs. So please help a brother out. Shout out to the homegirl list. I don't know why I keep saying that. One thing I want to point out is make sure the methods that you use to get to extremely low levels of body fat are sustainable long term. That's how you're going to ultimately get shredded and stay shredded. With that being said, citizens of earth, I need your energy for this outro. This is Ski Mask Duets signing out. Let's create the best, most aesthetic, most shredded version of ourselves to give to the world, okay? Peace.